It's a misconception to think that in desolate places, you can only enjoy the solitude of nature. Often, it's in these remote areas that people discover the most amazing things. In this video, you'll get acquainted with some of them. Enjoy the viewing. This photograph was taken by a drone in Romania. The object in the picture strongly resembles a flying saucer. It has the same shape and even something resembling portholes. However, as soon as the photo hit the internet, a debate started between ufologists and skeptics. Ufologists claimed that this was yet another piece of evidence of extraterrestrial civilizations, but skeptics criticized such comments, saying that the unidentified object could be anything. This place in Romania is indeed far from populated areas. But why would aliens leave their spacecraft in the open, where it could easily be spotted by a drone, as it happened? In the northwestern part of Italy, on Mount Coletto Fava, lies an unusual and very cute attraction, a giant, plush, pink rabbit. The gigantic toy, which is 6 meters high and 60 meters long, is located 1,800 meters above sea level. Its pose was designed as if it had fallen from a plane and crashed. Next to it, its plush internal organs are even scattered about. The creators of the rabbit are members of an art group from Austria. They spent about five years sewing, stuffing, and painting the toy. In 2005, the artists brought the rabbit to the mountain to create a unique resting place for tourists. The rabbit turned out to be very soft and cozy. People traveling in the mountains loved this spot. Tourists eagerly climbed on it, jumped on its belly, and lay on its chest. However, after being exposed to the open air for a long time and frequent encounters with people, the rabbit gradually began to tear. Now it is hard to recognize the cute pink toy it once was, resembling a pile of indistinct rags and straw. Attentive people flying over the USA have noticed strange concrete arrows on the ground through the airplane windows. Each arrow points in its own direction. But what is their purpose and who made them? No. This time, there are no speculations about UFOs or ancient civilizations. The explanation is much simpler. Modern airplanes are equipped with navigation systems, but after World War I, such an invention didn't exist. Instead of automated navigators, people came up with these concrete arrows. The first ground-based indicator appeared in 1924 in Wyoming for the airmail services. This solution proved to be very convenient. So within five years, they were installed across almost the entire USA. The arrows are about 20 meters long, which is enough to be clearly visible from the air. The distance between them is about 16 kilometers. After the arrows appeared in many states, they were modified to also help pilots navigate at night. Towers with lighting, resembling lighthouses, were installed next to the indicators. Their light was directed at the arrow so that the pilot could see where to fly next. Concrete arrows were used by aviation until the 1940s, and now they demonstrate how simple inventions can solve serious problems. In North Wales, near the settlement of Corus Uchaf, lies a unique attraction, the Cave of Lost Souls. This place is a resting ground for a vast number of cars and various junk. In the early 19th century, Slate mining was actively carried out in this area, but as the demand for it decreased, the Gavern Slate Mine was closed. The mine was reopened several times, but in 1971, it ceased operations forever. The abandoned mine became a convenient dumping ground. Over decades, residents of Corus Uchaf have been discarding unwanted items and even old cars into Gavern Slate. Now this place attracts many photographers with its amazing and slightly eerie atmosphere. In the summer of 2023, a user shared a peculiar photo online. The man said that he went deep into the desert in his car to take impressive photographs. However, instead of landscapes, his drone captured tanks. The photo shows that the military vehicles were neatly lined up in rows. But why were the tanks in the desert and what were they preparing for? That remains unknown. 
The man also mentioned that when he tried to bring the drone closer to the tanks, he realized that he had been spotted. Therefore, he hurriedly retrieved the drone and left the area. Imagine you're driving on a night highway. Deciding to take a break, you step out of your car and see a hundred motionless people standing in the fields. I think you would never want to step out of your car at night again. However, such a sight certainly wouldn't scare the residents of the Finnish town of Suomussalmi. 30 kilometers from the settlement, next to highway number 5, there is a creative installation named the Silent People. It consists of hundreds of structures depicting people, similar to scarecrows used to frighten birds. The creator of the installation is Finnish artist Rejo Kela. He started working on his creation in 1988. The artist does not disclose what meaning the installation is supposed to convey, so people began to propose their own interpretations. According to the most popular theory, the silent people symbolize those who died during the Finnish war. The artist continues to care for his creation, updating the clothes of the figures every two years, which he purchases from second-hand stores. In the forests of the Belgian settlement of Châtillon, there is a place where old cars spend their final days. Looking at the cars in the forest wilderness, it seems that people fled en masse from here and just left them behind. According to legend, the car cemetery appeared here during World War II. The vehicles belonged to American soldiers who placed them here during the war. After the war, shipping the cars home proved too costly, so the soldiers decided to leave them here. This sounds logical, but local residents disagree with such a story. They claim that the cars were manufactured in the post-war period, and the cemetery is actually just a car dump, with their owners neatly placing them in the forest. Despite the disputes about the origin of this place, it continues to be popular among tourists. The ruins of the ancient McDermott's Castle, located in the Irish county of Roscommon, attract numerous tourists from all over the world. This place indeed looks impressive. A small islet, a castle surrounded by trees, and the sun's rays reflecting in Loch Key. The Irish have a beautiful legend about the castle. According to it, a girl named Una from the McDermott dynasty fell in love with a boy, Thomas Mecastello. However, these two dynasties were feuding, and when Una's father learned of this love, he sent his daughter to the most remote island on the lake and locked her in the castle. But this did not stop the couple from secretly seeing each other. Thomas swam across the lake every day to glimpse his beloved. This story did not last long. Una soon died of loneliness and longing. She was buried on Trinity Island, and the lovesick young man continued to swim to the castle. One day he fell seriously ill, and before dying he came to Una's father. The young man only asked for one thing, to be buried next to Una. The father agreed, and soon two intertwined rose bushes appeared on the lover's grave, as if demonstrating eternal love. Interestingly, these bushes really grow on the island. Whether this legend is true or not is unknown. Historically, it is known that the castle indeed belonged to the McDermott dynasty. It was built on the site of another castle that burned down in the 12th century. The family lived in this castle until the 17th century. They had to leave their possessions after the invasion of the troops of the English general Oliver Cromwell. In the 18th century, the castle was struck by lightning and burned again. In the early 19th century, McDermott was rebuilt as a royal family residence, but it burned again during World War II. Unfortunately, throughout its existence, this beautiful castle was accompanied by misfortunes so the Irish authorities decided to leave only ruins in its place. In 2020, zoologists observing wild rams from a helicopter accidentally noticed an unusual object that appeared in a desert canyon in the state of Utah. The scientists had flown over this area before, so they were certain that nothing had been there previously. They decided to take a closer look at the object by landing nearby. It turned out to be a three-meter-tall metallic monolith in the middle of the desert wilderness. To this day, who its creator is and the purpose of its placement remain unknown. 
Many theories were proposed, ranging from extraterrestrial civilization's involvement in its installation to it being a strange project by an artist. However, none of these hypotheses found any proof. The monolith soon disappeared, yet similar metallic pillars began appearing in many other corners of our planet. These monoliths remain some of the most mysterious structures. In the dense forest near the town of Gold Hill in Oregon, there's a mystical place known as the Vortex. Native Americans believed that this land was a true whirlpool of mystique and therefore avoided this part of the forest. The first to decide to check whether something strange was really happening in the forest was physicist John Litzter. He studied the area for several years and even reported this anomaly to Albert Einstein in a letter. In the 1930s, he built a house there, which is now open to visitors. Interestingly, strange things still occur inside it. Visitors note that it's very difficult to walk on the floor of the house as they lose balance and sway as if on a ship during a storm. A broom, defying the laws of gravity, stands in place. Even if it's moved to another spot, nothing changes. Balls in this house roll uphill instead of down, which is also astonishing. Upon entering, visitors are offered to inspect the house and take a level with them to ensure that the house is indeed built evenly, not at an angle. An astonishing and shocking discovery was made near the Kern campus, located in the Ausersiel district of Zurich. Ancient remains of a Celtic woman were found by chance in the trunk of one of the fallen trees. It was clear that in life she was wealthy, as her body was adorned with numerous precious ornaments. After analysis, scientists found out that the remains were at least 2,200 years old. At the time of her death, the woman was about 40 years old. Analysis of her bones showed that she grew up in the modern Zurich area, in the Limit Valley. Scientists also discovered that she had a fondness for sweets in life. The woman was buried in a tree, which served as a coffin. She was dressed in an expensive woolen dress and a shawl-like garment. Around her neck, she had a necklace made of glass and amber beads. Her hands were adorned with bronze bracelets, and she had a bronze chain with iron buckles on her waist. Scientists still have to find out who this woman was, but the discovery of her burial place has opened new details about Celtic culture for science. In the summer of 2023, a shocking incident occurred in Slovenia. A resident of the town of Dupli, along with his children, was searching for treasures on the shore of a lake. Using a metal detector, they managed to find many different items, including a real bomb. It's unclear why the man didn't contact the police to report his find. Instead, he decided to take the bomb home. A day after, he finally called the authorities. The bomb disposal experts who arrived on the scene examined the man's discovery. It turned out to be an American 550-foot bomb from World War II. Although the bomb had been underwater for a long time, it could still explode at any moment. After evacuating the town's residents, the bomb disposal team began to defuse the bomb. Everything went well, but the man's actions endangered not only his family, but also others. Therefore, it's very important to immediately report such findings to the police in similar situations. Imagine the surprise of people driving along the highway through the Texan desert when they see a Prada store in this desolate area. If you thought this was a way for the company to sell its products to travelers, you are mistaken. In reality, the store is not real, and it's impossible to enter it. You can only look at the now outdated collection through the glass window. The installation was created by a group of Berlin artists, Elm Green and Dragset, and named Prada Marfa. This project was conceived as a symbol of materialism and consumerism. The store was established with the permission of Miuccia Prada, the head of the company. She personally consulted the artists and selected products for the installation. All of them were taken from the 2005 collection. Their total value amounted to $80,000. Over the lush jungles of South America, in the state of Sao Paulo, stands the Petrobras Viaduct. 
This remarkable structure was built in the 1960s during the construction of the Rio Santos Highway. The viaduct was supposed to be part of it. Constructing a 300-meter bridge at a height of 40 meters was very challenging. Problems with the delivery of building materials and the construction itself were compounded by the hot and humid climate with a large number of tropical insects. However, despite all the difficulties, by 1976, Petrobras was finally built. All that was left for the viaduct's operation was to connect it with the main highway by a small section of road. But suddenly plans changed and the Rio Santos Highway was decided to be connected with a coastal route instead. Thus, the Petrobras Viaduct, which had been worked on for over 15 years, became unnecessary. Nevertheless, thanks to tourists fond of extreme travel, the viaduct became popular again. And sometimes you can see people wanting to walk on the massive concrete structure over the Brazilian jungles. In the forest, near Portland in the state of Oregon, lies a Boeing 747-400. It didn't appear there after an emergency landing, its story is much more interesting. The large passenger plane is the private property of the former engineer Bruce Campbell. In 2003 in Greece, Bruce bought a decommissioned Boeing for $220,000. He transported it to the forest and decided to settle in it. Over several years, the man transformed the plane into a functional home. Bruce's dwelling has a shower cabin, a kitchen sink, a toilet, and a washing machine. The engineer sleeps on a fold-out sofa and to relax in the fresh air, he climbs into the plane's turbines. Bruce changed the flooring of the Boeing and installed glass acrylic panels instead. Now any guest can see what is under the floor of the plane. By the way, the man is always happy to welcome guests, of which there are many. He shows tourists how he has equipped the plane and treats them to tea. Bruce proudly shows off the control panel in the cockpit, which he restored himself. Some might find Campbell's dwelling not very cozy, but the man himself considers his home the best in the world. According to him, it's here that he finally got to truly enjoy life. In the territory of the Svalbard archipelago in Norway, eternal permafrost reigns. There is almost nothing here but snow, rocks, tundra, and a seed vault. According to scientists, this place is ideal for such a storage facility. The idea of creating such a reservoir emerged in 2004. The polar archipelago was chosen for a reason. The extreme weather conditions do not hinder the storage of tons of seeds, and the remoteness from populated areas provides their protection. In case of a nuclear war starting, it's unlikely anyone would attack an almost uninhabited archipelago. The vault was carved into the rock at a depth of about 130 meters. Construction work finished on February 26, 2008, and the reservoir was officially opened. The vault consists of three main chambers and a tunnel connecting them to the entrance. The total area of the space is 1,000 square meters. Inside, a constant temperature of minus 18 degrees Celsius is maintained. This place is also protected from a critical rise in sea level, as it is located 130 meters higher. Energy for power is provided by a mini thermal power station built specifically for this purpose. Inside the reservoir, 900,000 different types of seeds are stored. However, its area is only a quarter filled. Today, the vault in Svalbard is a unique place for ensuring food security. In the southern part of the Sinai Peninsula lies a rather unusual place for a desert location. In the middle of the Egyptian desert, under the open sky, there is a cinema that never started its operation. The cinema was created by the Frenchman Dino Adel in the 1990s. Back then, the project was called Seventh Art Cinema, but now it's known as the cinema at the end of the world. During one of his trips to the Sinai Peninsula, Adel was inspired by the desert and decided that it was the perfect place for building an open-air cinema. The concept of the project included setting up a large screen with a projector and wooden seats. The cinema was designed to accommodate 700 people. When everything necessary was purchased and installed, the cinema was preparing to meet its first viewers. The opening of this amazing place was scheduled for October 6, 2000. That day, the movie Jurassic Park was supposed to be shown. However, 
One of the generators broke down, and it couldn't be fixed quickly in the desert conditions, so the screening was cancelled. After this incident, Adele abandoned his project, but decided not to remove the seats. Now, the abandoned cinema creates a unique post-apocalyptic atmosphere, and tourists sometimes visit to take striking photos. On the outskirts of Maryland, between Bloodsworth and Smith Islands in the Chesapeake Bay, lies Holland Island. Once inhabited, the island gradually began to disappear with the rising water levels. Holland Island was settled in the early 17th century and named after Daniel Holland, one of its first settlers. By 1900, the island had a population of 360 residents. The main occupation of these people was fishing. At that time, there were 70 houses, several stores, a post office, a school, a church, and a community center on the island. By the 1920s, the tides gradually began to erode the land. The local residents tried to save their island, but to no avail. Eventually, they had to abandon their homes and move elsewhere. By 1995, Holland Island had almost completely submerged, with just a single house standing on a patch of land. This house caught the interest of former sailor Stephen White, who bought it for $70,000. For over 15 years, Stephen tried to save the small piece of land. He attempted various methods to create a shoreline. Unfortunately, in October 2010, the land on which the house stood was finally eroded, and it collapsed. Walking through the forest near Dusseldorf, one can find a real cemetery of retro cars. It came into existence thanks to the efforts of the German racer Michael Froelich. Froelich won his last race in 1974. That same year, in the forest near his home, he left a vintage Jaguar XK120. This car marked the beginning of his collection. Each year, Froelich acquired new cars. Now, there are 50 vintage cars in the forest. The value of the racer's collection is estimated at $1 million. Froelich calls his forest transportation cemetery the Park of Car Sculptures. Among the exhibits, one can find unique cars, such as a Rolls-Royce that once belonged to the Queen of the United Kingdom. All cars in the collection were manufactured starting from 1950. Froelich chose this year deliberately, as he was born in 1950. The owner of the car park deliberately does not maintain his cars, allowing them to rust and demonstrate what happens to them over time. This gives the car park a distinctive ambiance. In 1995, a remarkable image in the form of a spiral appeared in the Egyptian desert near the city of El Guna. People began to speculate that it was part of a series of mysterious geoglyphs of extraterrestrial origin. However, it turned out that aliens had nothing to do with it, and the creator of this work was quickly found. The creators of the spiral were sculptor Danae Stratou, designer Alexandra Stratou, and architect Stella Constantinidis. They named their art project Desert Breath. The installation is a spiral of positive and negative cones made from sand. At the center of the composition is a large pit that fills with water during the rainy season and reflects sunlight. It looks fantastic, and the geoglyph can even be seen from space. The creators of the sand image wanted to show that nothing in our world is eternal. Thus, the composition and its 89 cones are expected to disappear from the Earth over time, despite their scale. However, to this day, the artist's creation continues to amaze people. Davis-Monthan Air Force Base, located outside the city of Tucson in Arizona, is rightfully considered the largest storage facility for old military aircraft. The site for the airbase was chosen for a reason. The dry climate prevents corrosion, and the hard, dried ground allows for aircraft to be placed without asphalt covering. The base covers an area of 11 square kilometers, and its collection includes 4,400 units of aviation equipment. The base also houses 13 spacecraft. It's not possible to enter the airbase to view the aircraft. The parking area is thoroughly guarded, surrounded by an alarm fence with intelligent detectors. So we are left to admire these specimens of aviation technology 
only in photographs. And that's all from me. If you liked this video, don't forget to rate it, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell. Your activity is the best reward for me. Thank you for your attention. See you soon. Goodbye.